Between the crazy fans that used to come out of the woodworks to attend games at the Black Hole and the crazy owner that quite literally would do whatever it took to put a winning product on the field, both the Raiders and their signature logo have pretty much become synonymous with the NFL over the past 60 years. It's not because the Raiders have always been synonymous with winning, in fact, the franchise has been particularly downtrodden in recent years. But even so, they remain relevant because, well, because they're the Raiders. There's just something about this team. Like the Dallas Cowboys or the Green Bay Packers, the Raiders are undeniably one of the NFL's crown franchises, largely because of that unmistakable aura around the team, a lot of which stems back to the logo. Now, I don't know about you, but when it comes to pro football, they are one of the first teams that pop into my mind at the beginning of the season. Hmm, I wonder what the Raiders will be up to this year. Did they draft another 4.3 burner on the outside that can't run a route? Any $100 million contracts to coaches that have been in the booth for a decade? And and while the Raiders have one of the most recognizable brands and logos in the world, let alone just sports or the NFL, I'd bet that not everyone out there knows the story of how the Raiders logo came to be, or who the real person that the logo was based off of is. The story dates back to 1960, before the merger, when the Raiders were still just an upstart AFL franchise. This is so long ago that Al Davis still hadn't entered the fold. At the time, the Raiders were owned and operated by eight general partners, and one of them, Chet Soda, yes, I know that's a ridiculous name, and yes, it's real, also function as the team's general manager, or head of football operations, if you will. And one of Chet's early decisions, after helping to install the franchise's name, was to have a logo designed for the new team. Like many good businessmen, Soda knew what he didn't know, and decided to outsource the task to someone he felt had a better nose for design. He appointed Gene Lawrence Perry, who was a prominent sports writer at the time, as the first director of public relations of the Raiders, and Perry oversaw the development of the logo. Perry's idea for the logo was simple. He felt it ought to be a helmeted man with an eye patch and a firm chin. He even had a specific chin in mind, the chin of Randolph Scott, a well-known Western actor of the time. Perry then commissioned an unknown Berkeley area artist to actually create the design, and legend has it that it was literally sketched to Scott's likeness. Once the mystery artist fastened the eye patch, the leather helmet, and put a couple of fear-inducing swords behind his head, just like that, an iconic logo was born. Over the next 60 years, a few tweaks have been made to the logo and to the color scheme in particular, but for the most part, it has remained nearly identical, Scott's chiseled jaw and all. While Raiders fans might not want to hear it, I'd argue that the design of the team's logo has played an integral part of the way that the franchise has evolved over the years. Of course, the Raiders having success in the 70s and 80s added some credibility to the pirate ship style operation that Al Davis was running, but if you ask me, there is more to the Raiders being such an iconic and NFL team than that, and it begins with a decision to repurpose Randolph Scott's likeness as the team's logo. And although Scott reportedly never got any financial compensation for the appropriation of his grizzled look, the since-deceased actor was never hurting for cash. After earning a lucrative deal with Paramount Pictures early in his acting career, he parlayed his wages into a fortune in excess of $100 million overseeing sharp investments primarily in real estate, securities, and oil. While I would like to imagine the Raiders logo come to life as a true man of the sea, I guess Scott seems like a pretty cool guy to have a logo modeled after. What other NFL logos would you like to learn the history of? Let us know in the comment section below. If you liked this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps out a ton. And hey, we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thank you for watching and we'll see you guys next time.